I believe it's important to spend one-on-one -on -one time with the ones you love. Not in a group, not with a family. Sometimes then you need to have a date night with the girl you love, which is why I've made time for us, you and I, and the old girl here, Mona Lisa, to hang out together. Can you believe this? The Louvre is empty. Vacheron have cleared out this space to launch the four great civilizations watches. And in the process, we snuck in here and really took advantage of that. <laughs> This is going to be a video that you sit back, relax, get a drink, get a cup of tea. We're going back in time. <laughs> and if I needed just one shot to bring this together, Vacheron Constantin and the Louvre, I think I just found it. I've waited. 10 years, a decade, to be invited to stand here with this man, Christian Salmoni, the Style and Heritage Director of Vashon Constantin. So good to see you. This is not what I expect in the Vacheron Constantin manufacturer. I expected mahogany paneled walls. I oh. expected a, a, a watchmaker is 120 years old in the corner. What does this really? say about the brand? Well, I think it says uh, uh, in a nutshell that uh, despite the fact that we have been founded 267 years uh, ago. Yes. Well, we are very modern and contemporary. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Now look, you've mentioned time there, you've mentioned a long epoch of time. That's a you know, quarter of a millennia yep. and more. More, yeah. And change. What is it about this great civilization collection that has me freaking out? Because Marcus and I often talk about the fact that we can only really engage with watches that we could one day own. These are not watches that anyone who's watching this video is likely to ever own because there's four of them. What is it that's powerful about these watches? Because I'm, as, as I'm speaking, hopefully we're beginning to see some B-roll of these watches. They are extraordinary. And the fact that I will never own one doesn't bother me. <laughs> okay, Tim, yes, Tim. <laughs> uh, on my side, I would say that, uh, you know, when, 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 we, uh, when we are doing a Metadata series like, like, like this one, for example, yes. Of course, we, we really want to, 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 you know, the, to, to push the boundaries and to, to do even better in terms of craftsmanship that, that we ever made. I think these watches were really made to, uh, to pay tribute to great civilization, to celebrate this partnership with the Musée du Louvre. And of, of course, for us, it's, uh, it's also a way to, to showcase our you know, sense of innovation, creativity. Mm -hmm. And these watches are really bold as well. So I think it's, uh, yes, personally speaking, I think this series is just fabulous, yes. Yes, and even just learning about it gives you that thrill without that sense of potential ownership. And it's interesting, I was recently with a, a colleague of yours, and I would say another luminary, an absolute protagonist in this current narrative of watchmaking, Fabrizio Bonamassa Stigliani. Oh, okay. And we were in Rome, and I was saying to him that every corner I oh, yeah. turn, my heart, Totally. It just stops because yeah. I see something else. And I had that same effect from looking at these watches and looking at the way that they're, they're made. So tell me, what do, do these watches capture that make them so affecting, so moving? Yeah, so Andrew, I think we, we have to talk about, again, about this partnership that, uh, the, between Bachelon Constantin and the Musée du Louvre. So I think that this partnership created uh, the ground for, for great energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second point is the, the designer, Katinka, who has been designing the watches. I think she made a, a fabulous work mm. in a sense that she really wanted to, uh, to uh, extract, if I may say, from, from a Louvre uh, four uh, masterpieces of yes. the ancient times. And um, in addition, uh, we have worked with our, with, with our colleagues of the Louvre, the curators, in order to, um, to uh, in addition to the main subject for its civilization, to have some other you know, background subjects that would echo the, 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 main, the main subject or the main art piece. So I think this combination of, um, of, of different artworks of the Louvre in a very creative, in a very uh, spectacular way has been really uh, and unique. The, the each one unique, is so much. unique yeah. and you cannot mistake these civilizations for each other. Yeah. In one we have uh, you know, stonework and what yeah. do you call it, uh, marquetry, masonry. Yes, so, so yes, uh, in addition to, uh, to the design and I would say the complexity and the quality of the work of design and, and the collaboration with the curators of Louvre, I think you're right. So <clears throat> this is also uh, you know, a celebration of uh, decorative crafts. 
in the sense that we have uh, enameling, hand engraving, a stone marquetry, yes. uh, micro mosaic, um, uh, different kind of, of techniques, which are which are really here to support this uh, this, this this creation okay. in 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 such a fabulous way. So let's take a little trip. You can choose the order. Yeah, let's All go right. one by one through these great civilizations. Okay, so uh, so <laughs> I, I, I would like to try to to, to start with the uh, ancient Orient, mm -hmm. so meaning uh, old Persia, and so Darius the first. This is a, a frieze which were, which was uh, on a, on one of, the, one of the walls at the entrance of uh, the palace of Darius the first in Susa. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact the, the lion is uh, well. This is a brick wall, and the brick were were, were fired in the oven, so and glazed, a kind of like an enamel. Mm -hmm. And the lion each is brick. Uh, each, each brick, and the lion is in relief. Yeah. And so our designers, she 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 took that that uh, that uh, masterpiece as an inspiration. And so what, what, do, what do we have on, on, on the timepiece? So we have uh, replicated the, the bricks on the wall by uh, stone marquetry. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, two kinds of, of stones. You know, some, some stones are veined and some are not because we wanted to give the impression of the time which has been passing on the wall. Yes, and some patina. Um, it's a kind of yeah, patina, we could <laughs> say. And uh, <laughs> the lion itself is in white gold, uh, hand engraved mm -hmm. uh, with, with some patina as well. Yeah. And uh, I would say the, um, on the external part of the dial, we have also a, a, a decoration, which is also a frieze. Mm -hmm. And we have a kind of a triangular pattern, which has been taken uh, from another art piece of, art piece of the Louvre, which is uh, la frise du, du, des archers du Palais de Darius in French. And so you, you have it on the external of the dial. So again, it's gold, which has been also uh, um, uh, enameled with champ levé technique. And uh, the last thing, um, I would say the, the lion is on the top of the, of the dial, but w there is one layer which, which is almost uh, mysterious. Mm -hmm. And this is a transparent sapphire crystal on which we have made by deposition of gold yes. some, some cuneiform writings, and uh, which are also uh, totally relevant from, from the era and the civilization, thanks to our colleagues of the Louvre. I can see these shining lights around the corner. The four watches are on stands around here, and there's a lot of the World Watch media here taking it in right now. I think we have to go. I want to jump in out of the time machine for a second and ask you another question, because there's a question that is screaming in my mind. Yeah, tell me. Could any other brand do this? Well, uh, you know, Andrew, this is the question. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to... to, to, uh, to uh, to give you an answer by yes or no, so I think. Uh, but really I really want to know. No, I but, just do. no, no, let, no. But I, I can, I can make an answer. So, yeah. you know, um, the decorative crafts, the material, they are very, very close uh, to our hearts at Bachelon Constantin, and uh, year after year, so we are really always trying to be more innovative, to be more creative, and to to push the boundaries again. And so mm. I think, um, I would say, for myself. I think that uh, what, what we have achieved here is just uh, amazing, mm. and it's really something, uh, something uh, phenomenal. So this is the yeah. best answer that I can make <laughs> to you, Andrew. He's a humble man. Let's get back in the time machine. Where is the next civilization? What okay, are we saying let, now? Let's move uh, not so far from, from Darius I. Let's go to Egypt. Okay. So we have uh, uh, the, the, the Grand Sphinx of Tanis, the Great Sphinx of Tanis. So, so it's, um, it measures uh, 1.83 meter, meter long, mm -hmm. and it's huge. And so our designer, she decided to, uh, to put the, the face of the Sphinx uh, in the center of the dial. So mm -hmm. that, that is, of course, that makes sense. So the background, uh, this, uh, we, we have uh, two uh, uh, falcon uh, wings, yes. which are made by also uh, uh, champ levé enabling with some uh, aging effect. And these fal falcon wings, they are, they are coming from uh, the cover of a, of a coffin of a sarcophagus. And uh, again, uh, for all the watches, we have the sapphire crystal, which is, uh, which is just below the, the, the gold applique. And uh, this is, uh, of course, these are um, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, also that our colleagues, curators at the Louvre, have uh, uh, offered to us. And so they are coming from the same area and the same era. <laughs> So again, you are seeing this happen as you talk, and this is another extraordinary piece. 
Thank you. And that is actually related to my tattoo, which I mentioned outside. <laughs> What's the, the, ne the next destination? Okay, so, so if, if we continue our journey, uh, let's say chronologically, so then we should go to ancient Greece. And uh, we have selected uh, one of the most important uh, uh, masterpieces of the antiquity, which is the, uh, La Victoire de Samothrace, the victory of Samothrace. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a nutshell, the, the, the La Victoire de Samothrace was found in 1863 on the island of Samothrace in Greece. And so, uh, so it represents uh, Nike, mm -hmm. uh, so the, 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 the goddess. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a huge sculpture if you see it at the Louvre. And uh, so um, what is really int important in this, in this time piece is really uh, how our designer, she decided to, uh, to showcase the goddess. So instead of having you know, a, a recreation of the goddess from, from, from just in front, in front of her, she decided to took, uh, I would say, uh, to took um, the right wing of, of the goddess because, yes. um, and to uh, off-center a bit the, the sculpture, yeah, which, which gets, gives a lot of, of energy and, and yeah. uh, perspective. And, and exactly, and, mm. and, and you know, we, we, have the, we really see the power of this goddess. The goddess is crafted again in, in, uh, in white gold, and uh, we have the same, uh, same solutions uh, as we spoke before. So, you know, we have a, a background, um, a background which is uh, which is a very beautiful kind of uh, brown orange enamel. Uh, you know the, the kind of color that you you see when you look at uh, ancient Greece, Greece um, yes. uh, vases, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also um, some grisaille enameling on the on the external part of the dial, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is also uh, which is a pattern which uh, which we found uh, in another vase in the Louvre. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we have the external frieze also uh, with a decoration or a pattern which is also taken from another vase in the Louvre. And of course, we have our, uh, our Greek uh, um, letters, mm -hmm. uh, which are also coming from Samothrace yes. uh, from, from the same era. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's a very interesting one, I would say, the, the Victor de Samothrace, in the sense that um, it's unexpected maybe to see the Especially goddess uh, in, the... in this position, but yes. I think it gives a lot of power and. and and, uh, and it's really impressive, yeah. And this drives us, Andrew, if you, if you want, to the last one. Yes, let's because go. we have uh, Because Katinka had the same idea. So this is the, 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 the bust of Augustus, the bust d'August, so first the Roman emperor. So, uh, of course, so this is a great uh, sculpture, very impressive sculpture from, 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 the, from, the, from, from the Roman Empire. And again, uh, I would say uh, the, um, the, the bust is not at the center of the, of the dial because our, our designer, she wanted to, uh, to avoid, I would say, if I, if I can say the medallion effect or the coin, the coin watch effect. So yes. again, we have the bust, which is you know, at the left of, of the dial. And so I think it gives tremendous power to the bust. Yes. And um, uh, concerning the rest of the dial, I would say the background, uh, again, we find, we find enameling at the center, a kind of green, very mm -hmm. subtle green enamel in the center. But I think there is also something totally, uh, I would say, amazing. We have a micro mosaic. And so this micro mosaic is taken from a Roman mosaic, which was found in, uh, in Israel. And um, we have no less, Andrew, than 660 tiny parts of stone which has been cut individually and uh, applied on the dial individually. And, um, oh, and they made so it hard for themselves. Couldn't they have just done a, like, a life-size sculpture? Because this is a microscopic yeah, very much. version. No, no, I, I think it, I, I would say, I think it, you know, you, what I love really in the Roman timepiece is really you, you really feel the Roman Empire. I mean, yeah. you know, you feel this power, and you feel also this uh, exquisite level of uh, of culture, of arts and culture yes. that they have. So I think this one is really amazing too. And of, and in addition, I would say uh, Augustus bust is in white gold, so you have you know this kind of cold color, which is which is resonating so well with the micro mosaics. <laughs> Quick summary of the movement. This watch uses the 2460 movement, which has hour, minutes, day, and date indicated on four separate apertures. Now, this movement does exist. It's in the Le Masque collection from Bacheron Constantin, and it's a beautiful, uncluttered way to separate the time and date information from the star of the show, which, of course, are these amazing motifs. And this 
perfectly circles back to my first question about Rome, that feeling you have walking the streets of Rome, oh, yeah. and that sense of power, that sense of, uh, that sense of enormity of yeah, these civilizations. Yeah. And, and again, you just think, have we reached the peak? Are we, you know, compared to some of these great civilizations, yeah. where are we exactly? Because oh, no, we don't true. make things to last. Oh, no, it's true. We make disposable objects. We, we spend very little money and time on architecture and a lot of these, these great art artifacts that we have now and, and can have on our wrist. There's an elephant in the room, Christian. I don't even know if I can ask this question. Who gets to buy these watches? So um, let's, uh, let's say that, okay, so we have four civilizations and we will do only five pieces for its, its civilization. So at, on, on total, we will make only 20 watches. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, the Metiata watches, um, there is, of course, uh, there are collectors who are really into uh, decorative crafts and they, they love, uh, they love uh, Metiata watches. Mm -hmm. So I think probably th these ones will be really interested uh, to acquire these watches. But I think as well, you know, um, due to the, um, I would say, the cultural uh, aspects or, um, and also uh, thanks to the partnership with Musée du Louvre, I think I, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, this series will have a resonance as well, I would say, uh, uh, um, in different areas than, than, than you know, watchmaking, uh, watchmaking fans, so maybe as well. So, um, so, so we'll see. But I think, uh, I would say, on, honestly, so these watches are really, you know, I think most clients will be like collectors of Meteda watches and maybe on, on, a, broader, on a broader image, mm. collectors of art pieces as well. Yeah. Last question. It's a big one. Yeah. You can only have one. Which is your favorite? Yeah, that's a good question. So I've been fortunate. I think I got a feeling for which one it is. I've been fortunate uh, to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to have seen these watches already and to spend some time with them. Okay. So uh, obviously it's, uh, it's hard to, to choose one, but um, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> I think the, the, the Roman one, the, the, the Bus d'Auguste, uh, remains my favorite. That's because not what I expected. I, I, I thought it was going to be the Greek one. Which one? Greek. Ah, the Greek one. Not Greek. Yeah. yeah, both are really, I would say all, all, they are all very nice. But uh, <laughs> honestly, what I, what I love in the, in the, in the Bus d'Auguste is, again, we were talking about this. So for me, you know, this energy, uh, with, I would say the fact that the, the sculpture is off-centered and uh, the engraving is amazing. And, you know, you, you really feel the, the importance of, of, of Augustus. Yes. And of course, um, the micro mosaic is just mind blowing. Yeah. So, so that would be my choice here. Yeah. But I love as well very much the Darius, uh, Darius yeah. one, as well, I have to say. <laughs> so, so if I could get the two, that would be great. Christian, I never thought that I would be so engaged in Meta da, da watches like these, but there is something indisputable about the, the ambition, the, yeah. the crazy ambition in these pieces. Uh, I have enjoyed this discussion very much. Me too. It has took me 10 years to get here, but I hope it doesn't take me <laughs> 10 to get back. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lothar. That was great. Thank you so much.